All right, hello. So one thing that I've been um, seeing a lot of on YouTube are these book review videos, and specifically book review videos for technical books. I'd like to look at one in particular today, this one here. Um, Melvin Schwartz's Principles of Electrodynamics. Uh, this is one that we've seen a lot on the podcast on Physics Frontiers. What we've seen about it is that it's shown up as a good reference for a lot of the things that we've done. So um, for the last podcast that I just recently um, discussed, mm -hmm. uh, we did uh, the G minus 2 of the muon, and that doesn't want to come out. Um, but this book has a very nice description of that. G minus two experiment. I think it's just the G minus two experiment for the electron, but still, it's basically the same experiment. Only um, the newer ones, you know, are more complicated and more precise and have more energy and all those other fun things. Um, and the other one that I re really remembered it for was the metamaterial um, episode. So we did a metamaterial stress sensor episode. In this book unlike most, has a really good explanation of all of those um, metamaterial stress tensors. Or, so, or not just stress tensors, not metamaterial stress sensors. If you want to talk about those, you have to go to the podcast. Maybe I'll get that up on YouTube someday, but those aren't happening very quickly. It's been several years since I put one up. This, all these notes, basically means that I um, have been... I read this book, I read the entire book, and I did it after 2013, um, maybe after 2014. Basically, I picked up this book as, you know, a secondary source for things when I was teaching, you know, electrodynamics, and I talked that out of several books, maybe we'll at some point talk about them and talk about the different reasons why I chose different books at different times for it you know, for your junior level electrodynam electrodynamics class. Principles of Electrodynamics by Melvin Schwartz is a little bit more um, advanced than those books. So you should know that when um, you pick it up. It's a little more advanced than your standard junior level textbook. It's less advanced than Jackson. So it's somewhere in between uh, those places. So that's a little bit of a... Um, strange place to be. Maybe not so strange. There, there's plenty of room. Now, the first thing that people do in these videos is they go through the table of contents. Now, this is... I don't know why that's so interesting, but let's go through it. Um, first, it starts off with your basic math review. The only thing you might not be used to if you're ready to take, tackle, say, a junior level um, electrodynamics class is uh, the tensors here. Everything else up through there, up through um, about page 20 or so, that's basically Calculus 3 stuff. So um, if you've made it through Calculus 3, you've probably seen all of the math up until there. And then we've got a couple of extra things here to go with. Now, I'm not promising there are no differential equations in the in the um, problems. So a little bit more math might even be necessary for the book, but for what is here, um, the only new things will be the um, tensors and it will be the tensors, right? And that's going to be mostly important for, you guessed it, um, the stress tensor, the electrostatic or the electromagnetic or the magnetic stress sensors. So that's one of the interesting things about this book. Um, that's also going to be useful. That's going to be used in the different relativity portions of the book. Okay, then we have principles of electrostatics. So this is the normal sort of method. Normally you'll go with chapter one, some review, math review, two, go into electrostatics. And... You know, chapter three might still be more electrostatics, depends on the book. Uh, that's definitely the truth with um, uh, Griffiths, right? But um, I think right around here in this 
central area is where Griffiths chops chapters in two. It might not be that way. Griffiths, I think, does um, in air, then in media, then um, goes on to magnetostatics. So, but there is a large section that's mostly just math stuff, like solving Laplace's equation and stuff like that. Uh, three, this is the thing that's a little bit different, and that's where um, Schwartz talks about the connection between electricity and magnetism, basically through special relativity. Special relativity connects the magnetic field to the electric field, basically saying that the magnetic field is the part of the electric field that's left over when you take relativity into account, because we've got all of these moving charges going going around. Um, so this is a different sort of take on that. Normally, um, in Griffiths and also in Jackson, the normal um, graduate text, they wait till the end to start talking about gra talking about how relativity interfaces with electromagnetism. And I don't think that's really clear. So this is one of the things I really like about this book. If you'd like a similar presentation at a simpler level, there's a book by Purcell, and that does the same thing. After electrostatics, he talks about um, how relativity and electrostatics together give you magnetostatics. And after that, you go into magnetostatics here, and you're doing your normal things, it looks like, until you get up here. And then we're getting into Lamour precession, um, basically what happens to an electron, uh, you know, an electron has a spin magnetic moment. Um, and what happens to that when it's in a magnetic field? And then there's a method, not a message, a method for measuring that G minus 2, uh, which is one of the things we talked about, and then the stress tensor. So there's a little bit of extra stuff, a little more interesting things in there that you wouldn't get in most treatments. Um, and that's part of the reason why it's gotten referred to in our discussions of different phenomena on physics frontiers. For example, it had this is exactly what we were talking about, the G minus 2 of the muon on the last episode that I published. And, you know, like I was saying, after I did that, I was going through the numbers and I noticed, noticed the name, you know, the metamaterial stress tensor, and said, oh, well, that's also something where I talked about this Schwartz book. So maybe I should, you know, do something like you know, talk about that in a video. So that's what I'm doing. And then we go into five, which is basically Faraday's law and connecting the electric and magnetic field through by saying basically the um, changes in one become the sources of the other, right? So a change in the magnetic field becomes a vector source for the electro electrostatic field. Um, as long as, you know, that's a continuous change in the magnetic field. So that's the um, fifth thing. So up to there, everything's sort of normal. Then he goes into, you know, electrodynamics in general for chapter six. Now you're talking about uh, light or electromagnetic waves and different issues with that. Um, and then we talk about the interaction of the radiation with matter. Right? So this is all radiation stuff. More radiation stuff, we're dealing with multipole moments and what happens there. In Griffiths, that happens a lot earlier, um, although that's not with the radiation. It's talking about different sorts of expansions and ways to um, solve differential equations. Um, then waveguides and the electric and magnetic susceptibilities. This part, I'd sort of prefer to be, you know, in more of the text. That's the one thing I dislike, but um, it does show up at the end. That's not too uncommon either, I'm afraid, is that a lot of times the things that make these interesting in the real world don't show up in the textbook. So that's what's in the textbook. It's actually a very clear textbook. Um, let's see. Normally when I flip through this textbook, I find lots, I missed one, but lots and lots of um, graphs and you know, drawings and things like that, which is very good, especially for something this old. And, you know, they're nice line drawings. They're nice, simple drawings. They're not, 
those ones that show up uh, for the newer, you know, undergraduate textbooks, especially where, you know, they've been um, designed too much and you can't really understand what they're for anymore because, you know, they've got too much design theory in the drawings. So there's the info, infographics make the things absolutely useless. So that's something that's very nice there. Did I accidentally end up? No, no, this is probably Lorentz transformation. Yes, it is. It's Lorentz transformation. So, like I said, the thing I like about this is that it does a lot with <coughs> the electromagnetic stress tensor. <coughs> and that's important because that electromagnetic stress tensor sort of explains forces. You know, this is the simple way to explain your force, right? This is uh, your basic um, equation for the electric field, right? You've got your force on an object, and when you integrate its volume, and, you know, there's the dense, the charge density at that point times the field at that point, and that gives you the force, right? Um, but one way to deal with that comes out to this over here, this tensor. Now that force is going to be that tensor, right, in a particular direction um, over a uh, surface area. So that's a nice way to deal with this. And when we talked about the uh, met metamaterial stress tensor, that was basically saying how we can modify a material, um, you know, with many different ways we can do now um, to do that. So that was one thing that was interesting too. So this is a very nice read, and let's see if I can get one more thing. Um, and I think you'd probably like it if you want to learn a little bit and you don't want to get into the really nasty things with um, Jackson. So here, the method of measuring G minus 2. So you see, Schwartz has an actual point of view. That's very nice. I guess another nice thing is it has plenty of things to work out, but not too many problems. So it's not at all like, say, Jackson, where you have so a whole lot of problems and a whole lot of really, really tough problems, right? So if you want to go through, have a nice um, experience with electrodynamics, I think this is a good book for you, rather than going through and um, trying to do all the great stuff with um, Jackson. So Jackson will basically show you what an amazing person you are, or show other people how amazing a um, physicist, physicist or mathematician or whatever it is you are um, by solving those extremely tough questions. But uh, Schwartz will give you some insight, I think, that Jackson, because it has just so much stuff in it, uh, won't. So, you know, Schwartz has, is poignant. He has a point of view, whereas Jackson is a collection of just about everything you will need to know for anything you possibly could do. So I really suggest this. It's a Dover book. It's cheap. I'll put a link in, I'll put link below, and I don't know what the description box for this video, I guess. And um, hopefully you can take a peek of that and uh, you'd enjoy it. All right, bye now.